So the correctness condition is essentially that safety, there's only one thread in the critical section, which the lock, acquire, and release guarantee. Um, liveness essentially says that some thread that enters the critical, uh, that enters the entry section, that is, tries to acquire the lock, eventually enters the critical section. If, even if no other thread, no thread, other thread takes forever in a non-critical region. That is, respect to if no other thread trying different things in the system, that is, they're not contending for my critical section, but they're doing other things, then eventually that I should be able to enter the critical section. So that's a liveness condition. The hardest of almost all is bounded weighting that says at every thread that enters this entry section enters the critical section within a bounded number of operations in respect to whether there are other threads trying or not. So this tries to be a more fair system. Uh, this again um, requires not all locks can be built in this fa with the bound bounded weighting property. Uh, some are and some aren't. And we look at a few algorithms that actually aren't but perform pretty well. And finally there's the uh, failure of Tom City aspect which most uh, critical sections do not guarantee which says that it is okay for a thread to die in the critical region um, but many techniques do not provide failure atomic city because let's say that your thread dies um, at that point then what's going to happen is that your lock is not going to be released and um, the other threads are not going to be able to make progress so the way so I'm just going to lay out an overview of where we're going with critical section what we're going to do is essentially implement various higher level synchronization primitives uh, using atomic operations. So you can essentially split your program into three parts. Uh, you have your programs, your higher level API, and your hardware as you're going down lower. Uh, each of the lower levels provide primitives um, that are exposed to the higher level. Okay, And the higher levels essentially provide abstractions for user level programs. So if you look at it, um, the kind of primitives that each of these levels provide. The hardware provides um, essentially load stores, uh, disable interrupts, atomic operators such as test and set and compare and swap that can be used to implement locks. The middle API provides things like locks constructed based on these low level hardware operations, uh, semaphores, monitors, both of which we will look at um, in the next few weeks. And you could also implement message passing primitives such as send and receive. And finally, the programs are shared memory programs uh, that build on top of these abstractions to coordinate the actions between different threads uh, for manipulating shared state. Uh, the slides do include a couple of different examples of various conditions um, that occurred um, and caused havoc. Right? So why do we, do we really care about synchronization? Um, is it just uh, the one percent of the program, or can some ba bad things really happen? Right. So the I, we do include a couple of different examples on what happens if you don't manipulate shared state correctly. Okay. So to summarize, uh, concurrent threads are a useful abstraction. We absolutely need them going forward to extract performance from it. Hardware. Uh, it allows transparent overlapping of computation with other computation that's independent and computation in I.O. It makes use of power multi-cores when which are pretty much available everywhere. Uh, shared data introduces challenges. Uh, programs must be properly synchronized in order to manipulate shared data. Um, without careful design, shared data variables can become completely inconsistent, hence breaking a program. And an important concept um, to deal with shared state is atomic operations. An operation that runs to completion or not at all. And such atomic operations can be used to construct various synchronization primitives. If you look at um, the toolbox that's generally available to us, implementing a concurrent program with only reads and writes is tricky and error prone as we saw with the too much milk example. Um, even with two threads, it requires asymmetric solutions and makes it kind of hard to reason about and prove that they work. Um, we'll essentially implement high level operations on top of atomic operations provided by hardware. 
So going forward from here onwards, I really discuss too much milk without locks just to help you understand the hard task of coordinating threads. Uh, from here onwards, the going forward, um, we'll essentially um, be dealing with high-level operations that use atomic operations provided in hardware. So we're not going to be assuming there are no, that we have any read and rates. All known, known, known processors these days uh, provide low-level atomic operation in the form of uh, test and set, compare and swap, and a bunch of other instructions. And we'll be using these to build our synchronization toolbox and explore common programming paradigms. In the next segment, we'll be dealing with how to implement locks.